All right, and as usual, we are driving and striving and hugging the turns and thinking of someone for whom acid still burns. We're going the distance. All right, let's take a look at this code. Let's highlight this bit. That's what I already told you. We've got completion list data pointing somewhere plus offset gets us somewhere inside the shared page. Okay, so continuing on, we take a look at this code. And so as a reminder, this user mapped message is of type port message pointer. So it's going to behave a little bit interestingly. When you dereference that, you'll get an entire port message structure worth of data being written to that location. And furthermore, when you do pointer arithmetic, you will be moving forward by an entire port message structure. So how we would visualize this, we've got user message, move it up a little bit. The dereferencing and storing of this message port message is going to take data, the full structure worth of data, and store it at this location. And of course, that will immediately become visible down here in user space because it is a shared page. And so it's the same physical memory appearing at two virtual memory addresses, one for the kernel, one for user space. And of course, if the data is immediately visible down here in user space, that means we are off to the races. An attacker who can manipulate user space and make it acid, it will immediately become acid up here in kernel space as well. So if kernel space touches any of that, then it's going to have a problem. Then the second line was just saying there's some pointer arithmetic being occurring and so user mapped message data is going to be one uh, port message structure worth forward so that's pointing at the end of this little header and it would expect that to the actual data would come after the header all right continuing on in the code if we take a look at this code right here it has sort of two options if the data user va is zero then it's going to call alpc p read message data or if not, then it'll do the ALPCP get data from user virtual address safe. So after one of those is called, we don't know, you know, there's not enough context in the, uh, in the original write-up to know for sure which one is going to be called. I suspect it's probably uh, this first one because I believe that given the way the code is behaving and what we see in the uh, example code, this is like the ALPC message overall is sent to the Windows kernel. That is being processed up in the kernel, so the message data body uh, is going to be processed, and so I think that's going to be this first one. But of course, with this limited pseudocode, I don't know for sure. In any case, the expectation is that that will be copied to this user mapped message data location, right? Both of those take a message and a message data location. So we expect it's copied right there. And of course, it will immediately appear in user space as well. Now, after this, we don't know for sure if this pointer is still pointing at the beginning or if it's pointing at the end. Again, insufficient pseudocode, but it doesn't really matter for our purposes. Because when we move on and we check out this code, here's where the flaw is. Specifically, this accessing of this shared memory location total length, which the attacker could have changed already to ACID, and that will subsequently cause this pointer to be ACID, and ACID pointers are, of course, extremely dangerous. So, here the attacker raced and went ahead and filled in a malicious total length, between the time when pointers were calculated and between the time when this attributes assignment is occurring. So total length is ACID now at this point, and that means the overall calculation of this attributes pointer is going to be user mapped message plus the ACID total length plus this alignment padding, which we don't really care about, but ultimately that means attributes is going to be an ACID pointer, and so it can point anywhere the attacker wants. As long as they can see where they're going, they can go somewhere else and cause some sort of overwrite. So great, they've got an acid pointer, they've won the race, what are they going to do with it? So if we look at the next couple of lines, we see that there's this completion list attribute flab, and we don't know for sure if that is acid or not, because there's again not enough context, but we can see that that is written to this acid location. So attributes is being treated as an ALPC message attributes pointer. And so whatever the structure definition is for that and whatever the offset is for allocated attributes, that is the offset from this ACID value where the write is going to occur. So if that's ACID or even if it's just some well understood value, that could still provide benefit to the attacker because they can just take this potentially sassy data and write it to an arbitrary location of memory. 
so sort of a right sassy wear. Or if that doesn't get them what they're looking for, they've got this assignment of zero to some other offset from that location. And, you know, being able to write an arbitrary zero into memory can actually be extremely beneficial because you can, for instance, find some security configuration flag or something like that and turn security off. Just write a zero and now security will be ignored somewhere. So again, we don't have enough context to really understand exactly what's occurring here, but the thing that I wanted you to recognize is that there was a race condition occurring. And specifically, the original researcher classified this as a time of check, time of use vulnerability, but according to our definition here, I don't think it fits that because this is not basically checking anything before it's being used. And so, uh, you know, maybe there was some other pseudocode that was left out, and so maybe that, uh, that definition would apply, but at least given the pseudocode we have, it doesn't really look like there's any check, so it doesn't look like it's time of check, time of use. Furthermore, it doesn't look like a double fetch. Basically, the kernel is writing something from this other message that was 100% clean. It's writing it into shared memory, and then only after that is it reading back the value. But that's not like a double fetch. It never used the value previously. So we're going to classify this as just a good old race condition that is neither double fetch nor talk to. So what was the fix for this? Well, unfortunately, it is proprietary code, and there was no patch analysis done by the researcher, so we don't know.